Let's have some fun making funky cabinet cards. Welcome, it's Barbara from Vienna, Austria. So the first thing we need is collage fodder. So if you have some already, then you can just use that. But if you don't, let's make some together. I like to use packaging and I'm going to choose some lighter colors, which will help us see the print on top better. So these are some of the colors I chose. I'm using Distress Oxide sprays. You can use whatever you want. You don't have to use sprays at all. You can use acrylic paint or even watercolor paint with a brush. And I'm going to use a bunch of different stencils. I will do my best to link all of these stencils for you below in the description box. I always like to wear gloves when I work with Distress Oxide sprays because the stains can be very difficult to remove from your hands. I'm going to start off with fossilized amber and this dragonfly wing stencil by PM Artist Studio. And let's add some saltwater taffy. Always be sure to shake your sprays before you use them so that the pigment can mix. Okay, let's take this off carefully. So we have this one design and then we always get two for one because now we just use this here for a second one. And a lot of times I prefer this print actually. I think they both look very cool. So let's set these aside to dry. Next, I'll try this one. This is also from PM Artist Studio. Let's do the picket fence. And let's add some rusty hinge to that. Wow, it looks so cool. <laughs> it's so fun to make some collage fodder like this. And let's see what the reverse print will look like. Oh wow, that's also super cool. Loving both. Let's set those to dry. Next, I'm going to try this one by Tim Holtz. It has a number THS051. I'll add some stormy sky. And some picket fence. Obviously, you don't have to do two colors. You can just do one color, but I kind of like the two-tone effect. And the reverse. And lastly, I'll use this stencil from Studio Light. And I'll start with Kitsch Flamingo. And add fossilized amber. Now that looks a bit crazy. I love it. And the reverse image. So fun. I think I like this one better. Since the paper is so thin, they dry pretty quickly. I will tear around the images so I will get rid of anything where there isn't a lot of color. Once I have all of those pieces torn, I'm going to mount them onto printer paper. I have 200 GSM paper here, so it's quite thick, but I've also done this with regular copy paper. The thicker one is a bit nicer because it won't warp as much, but you can totally do it with that as well. I'm going to use my Liquitex matte gel, but if you don't have this, you can also use regular glue. But if you use glue, I would definitely, depending on how thick your glue is, potentially thin it down a little bit with water and definitely brush it on rather than just squirting it out. So now I'm just going to add these to my paper and I'll probably need to tear it up a bit more. 
and I'm not expecting all of these to turn out perfectly. So I'm going to be printing three pages and then I'll pick and choose which ones I like best. Not everything has to be covered. Actually, it's kind of fun when you have areas that are white and areas that have some color. So I'm just going to add my matte gel. And when you have sort of a bigger piece like this, I like to start from one end and then kind of slowly keep going. And I want a little bit of wrinkles, not mega wrinkles, just a little bit. So while I am adhering it, I'm kind of squishing it together. And if I get tears like this, that is perfect. I know these are all the things you usually try to avoid. So how cool to actually have a project where you want all these things to happen. So this for me is a perfect application for this project. <laughs> actually, I'll make this a little bit bigger, and maybe even tear out some of that. What is very important is that you have all of the edges adhered completely because you don't want those to get stuck in the printer. So make sure those are really secured and actually I will go around just the edges to make sure that nothing will come up. You do not want any, any paper bits stuck somewhere in your printer. Very, very important. Now you could do this with either a laser or an inkjet printer. Either will work. And even if you just have a black and white printer, that will be perfect. Again, making sure all of my edges are sealed. And also here where the hole is, I want to make sure nothing is going to come up. And when you see that it's coming up in some parts, then maybe do go over it. Just to make sure because you really, really don't want anything stuck in your printer. I know I'm repeating myself, but this is super important. So this is number two. Of course, you also want to be careful that, that none of your collage fodder goes beyond the edge of the paper. And this is number three. So now these need to dry thoroughly. Once you're completely 100% sure that all of your papers are completely dry and there's no paper bits sticking out anywhere, and all of the wrinkles are fairly flat, then we are ready to print. If you have cabinet cards, obviously you can just scan those or take a photo and use those. I have a very nice collection here, and I have scanned some of these. These have actually been printables in my shop for a long time. So that's what I'm going to be using. So if you don't have any that you can scan or copy yourself, then you can find mine linked below. That way you can have exactly the same ones that I'm using. I currently have my printer set up on the floor because I still have my old one on my cabinet and this one is too heavy for me to lift so I have to wait till my hubby gets home. I've recently upgraded from the Canon TS5050 which was fine to an Epson ET5850. I will link this one for you below as well. This is more like an office version so it's probably not what you need but this is one of the EcoTank Epson printers. They have smaller printers for personal use. And if you're currently looking for a printer, because I get asked all the time about my printer, that's what I would look for. EcoTank Epson home printer, because you use up so little ink. It's absolutely amazing. And the quality is just fabulous. So I'm going to put these papers into the rear tray of my printer. And on the paper type settings, I'm going to change it to thick paper in my case. So you put whatever paper you're using and now we can go to print. So these are the three pages I chose and I chose them specifically this one because there's a lot of white around. So hopefully we'll see our prints underneath really well. And this is number two. I think here with the dark background, it's going to be a bit difficult, but we'll just try it. And this is page number three, and you might recognize that image there on the top left, which is part of my previous logo. So then all we do is go to File, Print. 
And then I'm selecting all three pages. And then on the bottom where it says media and quality, obviously your setup might look a bit different. I'm going to click that and feed from, I'm going to say rear tray. I'm keeping the auto select for the media type and for quality, I'm adding best. And then I'm just going to hit print. So let's have a look at the results. And I think this looks super fun. Look at all this design we have here. They're going to look differently again once we cut them out, but I love it. These are super fun. And even this one, we can see the design on all the light areas. It's so cute. Also really like how she turned out and her. Oh, I'm very, very happy with these results. Okay, so let's cut them out and see how they look then. If you don't have one of these guillotine cutters, I would suggest to cut them out by hand with scissors, because if you have one of those where you just move the blade, I would think that you would tear the paper. Okay, let's have a look at them once they are cut out. So this one's pretty cool. And a lot of these are actually from Vienna, where I live. So I love that, obviously. I love this one. This might be my favorite one. Look at how cool the writing looks. This one is just so funky. And I love that the paper ended here and we have these two tones here on the bottom. Love, 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 love. This one is also pretty cool. This one was the reverse of this from the stencil. Then we have her, I really like her as well. I love the pattern here in the background and I again love that the paper ended here and that we have this one stripe here. This one here is okay. Again, I love that the paper ended here, but this here, this tear here is a bit too much. What I do like about it is that, you know, it prints just right over this hole. This one is fine, love the design on top. This one I love. This is definitely one of my favorites. Look at the hole here. Look how it printed the writing right over the hole. It looks so cool. And we have this one, also very cool. This one I love as well. Then we have this one, better than I thought because this has so much dark background, but it still looks super cool with these orange circles. And we have this one. Again, we had this huge tear here and it printed right over that. And when we have this one. But that's not it. We're going to keep making them yummier. <laughs> so the reason why I wanted these creases is because I wanted to add some kintsugi. I will put the definition of kintsugi for you here in case you are not familiar with it. And then I'm going to put on this little finger. <laughs> so this is cut off from a rubber glove. This was a tip I saw in a video from Susanne from Bornhut Art. Danke nochmal Susanne für diesen Tipp. So this is so practical. And I'm going to use some gilding wax. I have this really soft one. The color is metallic gold. It's from Craft Emotions. And I love these because, first of all, they smell like orange and they stay soft for such a long time. This is the first gilding wax that I've purchased that stays soft because the other ones that I had previously, they get hard after a few months. So this one is really, really easy to apply. And if you don't have a gilding wax, you can also, of course, use acrylic paint or watercolor. Just make sure it's not runny because now what we're going to do is take this and maybe actually I have a bit too much on my finger and super gently rub over all of these creases. So we're going to make those come out now. We don't want to make everything gold. We just want to have this tiny detail come out a bit more. You see that? It looks so cool. It's very easy to go overboard with this, so please be very gentle. So that's it. 
for this one. Doesn't that just look so cool? And I will continue to gently do that for all of these. This is a very calming, meditative practice, I think. <laughs> and it's so fun to see how these creases all of a sudden just appear seemingly out of nowhere. Okay, tell me, is this not cool? <laughs> Once we're done with that, we can also add some fun stitching. I'm going to start with a golden thread, like this one here. You can obviously use any color you want. Embroidery thread works really well. So for example, I can take this one and I can just stitch some crosses in here, for example. Actually, it's easier if you poke your holes first. I have this little piece of foam from packaging and I'm just going to poke my holes first. I'll add some crosses on this one. I'll start from the back, leave a bit of a tail, and then just always stitch the diagonal holes. Another very relaxing task, in my opinion. I know not everybody enjoys head stitching. And then with my last one, I'll come back down, turn it around, cut off the thread, and I'll just secure that with some masking tape. Just like that. Then I'll take like a yellowish thread. This time I'll try without pre-poking the holes. And I'm also trying to be like a bit more messy, which is so difficult. So I'm going to vary the lengths of my stitches. We can also just stitch around part of an edge. We could just stitch around the edge like this. And since my last stitch here comes to the top, not to the bottom, I'm just going to make a knot here instead of threading it down and securing it with masking tape. So I'll just take my needle, go through it once, and then place the needle where the hole is and just pull it tight. That way I have the knot right where the hole is. And I can then just cut that off really short. On this one, we have this big hole here, right? So I want to cover that up by trying to stitch some sort of a flower or sun or something like that. I'm not sure what it's going to look like in the end. So I'll keep stitching in the same hole in the middle and then I'll just stitch in a circle around it. And I'm trying to not be precise about it. <laughs> meaning I don't want them all the same length. So I added two more small ones. I think that looks really cute. I added a golden one here, right on her dress on the chest. On this one, I stitched along her dress here. We can see a lot of the holes here and I think we can flatten those a little bit, either with scissors or a bone folder or something to make those disappear. I don't know if you can see the difference, but all of those white holes that were on the right side now are gone. Lastly, on this one, I stitched three more Let's call them stars 
Oh, I don't like this white, so I'm going to just get rid of that. Obviously, you could also do some stitching with your sewing machine, but mine currently is not working, so I can't do that. <laughs> And because I know not all of you will want to go through this whole process and some of you will be a bit worried about <laughs> putting these kinds of papers through your printer, I also wanted to offer digital versions of these. So you can find those linked below in the description box as well. We're going to continue and I want to add some stamping to some of these. I'll add some of these field note stamps by Tim Holtz. And I will link the set for you below as well. I'm using my Jet Black Stays On Ink, which is permanent. And for example, on this one here, this poor little girl is going to be condemned. And for any of the German speakers watching here that are not sure of the meaning, it means verurteilt in German. And for the English speakers, you just learned a new German word. <laughs> I hope we will see it well. Yes. So I'm not sure why she's condemned, but she is. <laughs> Let's do a partial butterfly stamp here. We can really just have fun with these and go crazy with stamping if we want. Obviously, I would have loved to scan them with the stamps, but I cannot due to copyright reasons, of course. I also wanted to show you this one, which I did yesterday. And as you can see here, it has shine on it. So that's another option. And I also just printed this one on regular copy paper. So you see it works just as well. And I added my Amsterdam Heavy Gel Medium Gloss on the top, just one layer, brushing it with a regular paintbrush. So that's a really nice effect as well. Mod Podge, of course, would work any glossy medium you have. And if you'd like to add one to a book cover, for example, I have this plain book cover here. Then what I would do is for example, if I wanted this here on my cover, I would not just mount it like this, although you could, but I would want it to have a little more depth. So I would take a piece of cardboard and first mount it on that. So I'm going to cut this down first. And then I'll just take my cabinet card and glue it on whatever craft glue or whatever you have that works for you. We make sure all of our corners are glued down really well. Don't want those coming off. And then of course we don't want the light cardboard showing on the side. So first I'm going to take a black marker and go around the edges. You could also do it with paint. If your book cover is a different color, then maybe you want to choose the color of your book cover. So here you see that looks a lot better. And once I have that all around, I'm also going to add some more of the gilding wax, just because. <laughs> I think it looks really nice on that black background. You see? That way I also don't have to worry about it covering the whole edge like I would if I wouldn't have added the black underneath. And I also want to add some more on the, the top edge so that I see it from the front. And since I already got a little bit here on my cover, <laughs> we might as well make that look intentional by just very gently adding some here and there. Okay, stop. <laughs> so how does this look now? That looks pretty cool. 
Maybe we'll add one of these can openers. But of course, I don't want it new and shiny. So I'll add some alcohol ink on it. This one is butterscotch. Yeah, that looks cool. We could even poke a hole through the cover and add a brad if we wanted to. Let's see if I have anything here that I could add. <laughs> Maybe in a different color or even this color. That's kind of interesting. I have this brooch here. It's kind of big. But interesting. Not sure about the color. I mean, it would fit. Purple and yellow, of course, are complementary colors, so they go together really well. I'm just not as sure about the combination with the black. But also an interesting option. How about some of this worn wallpaper from Tim Holtz? The number is TH93974. These are all the designs you get. Hmm. Not really sure what I want or if I want this at all. I can, of course, make it darker. I don't know. Yeah, I think I do like it when there's something else there. Okay, let's darken these up. Let's try some walnut stain. I'm liking the brooch. I don't know, it's kind of weird. That's why I like it. <laughs> But I found something else. Look at this cool looking clip. I think I got that in a Happy Mail once. Maybe this would be even better. Yes, I love that. So I'm going to glue everything down just using my craft glue. And then I'm also going to add some of this butterscotch alcohol ink um, to my cover. Oh, if I could only hit it. <laughs> so here's my finished altered book cover with a funky cabinet card. <laughs> Have fun with these. Love you guys. Mwah, mwah. My favorite song on I put my feet up And we just sing along And I can't help but